Hello and welcome to Wine Festival Online. We are Susie and Peter. We're masters of wine. Uh, we are co-founders of Wine Festival Winchester, which this year has transformed into Wine Festival Online. So coming up next, we mm. it is our privilege to, to introduce this masterclass, which is featuring Clive Barlow. He is a fellow, fellow master of wine. wine. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And Clive has got a whole load of English, in fact, mostly, I think it's all Kentish wines. And he's doing this in collaboration with Cork, uh, a brand new English wine specialist. Cork as in C-O-R. K K. Yeah, now Clive really knows his onions when it comes to English wines, um, and I love this video because he's popping up all over the place. He pops up in, I think, what is it, the, um, oh, the yeah. Squarey's <laughs> Vineyard, where he's inspecting the vines and spitting the odd pip. Spitting a pip. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he also pops down to Oxley, doesn't he, checking yeah, out the harvest. Yeah. And he's, he's Simpsons. He's at, at Simpsons. He, you, we are very worried he's at some point going to get run over by a forklift truck. But, uh, yeah. but spoiler alert here: there are no Clives hurt in the filming of this masterclass. <laughs> yeah. Right, he also uh, encounters, which I love, a massive bladder. Just going to leave that yeah. there. Yeah, you'll have to look out for that yeah. one. So, um, um, tasting wise. Yeah, there's, well, the sound quality go comes and goes. We're we just going to say this. Oh, yeah. We, we, the sound quality comes and goes a little tiny bit, but you know. But to be honest, it's almost worth bad. it because, you know, we see the adventurer. <laughs> He is like the Indiana Jones, I think, figure right now. He needs one of those hats, doesn't he? Clive yeah. Barlow. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. worth it for the sound. You can't yeah. hear him perfectly sometimes. Apologies, but it's worth it for, for this, you know. So he's got he's got a, a Spears, Spears, a sparkling wine, a, a, a rosé and a white. Uh, the mm. tasting order that he does it in is the Fizz first and then the rosé and then the white. You'll need to get them all out of your fridge. Yeah. Uh, but Clive does things in a, a nice, nice genteel sort of fashion. So there's plenty of time to open your wines uh, as, it, as it goes along. Genteel is a very good way of saying it. From our part, we'd like to thank our sponsors, particularly our headline sponsor, Rathbones. We'd also like to remind you we have competitions running, competitions for real prizes, delicious prizes of Mostly wine. Mostly wine, let's Mostly be honest. Wine. Um, we have got our tasting selfie competition and also our sharp eyes competition. So more details for those are on the website. Now this video will be live after after this um, particular session, so you can watch it again. And uh, there will be another masterclass coming up just after it. So stick around for that too. Absolutely. If, if you, you love the wines, sorry to interrupt, if yep. you love the wines, then do buy them uh, from Cork. Uh, this is a great shop to have a route around uh, and buy from. Yep. And if you have any problems, I was just going to say about the videos, any problems viewing any of the videos, just email us at hello at thewinefestival.co.uk or contact us via social media. And all the details for that are on our website. So enjoy the Cork Masterclass with Clive Barlow, MW. presentation of tasting of English wine and we're going to be tasting world-class world-beating wines because England is now producing those wines and this Simpsons estate is one of the estates which we're visiting and you'll see through in the show all the different ones we visited so there are squares in north and west Kent, Oxney down in the south. Sorry for the noise but we're here in the middle of harvest so we've got trolleys going all over the place, wines Nowhere to be seen, it's all in the winery. We're going to go into the press room later. But anyway, Cork is a new company which is selling bespoke packages of English wine. We taste all the wines so that you get the ones. We are a wine filter, a wine filter of English wine. If you go on our site, you'll find the wines which we think are the best in the country. I love English wine. It was tasting English wine and working on English vineyards that actually made me interested in wine as a whole. And it's a beautiful product and we're now making some fantastic wines. Here we are then, Jonathan, a cork, of course, in the, the vineyards in Kent of Squarries. Uh, and we're in there, Pinot Noir. And it's just about to be harvested. Harvest time now in uh, early October. Uh, these vines were put in in 2006 okay, by the Ward family on their estate here, uh, after really being given the heads up by a champagne house that this was ideal land, which the champagne house wanted to buy it. And the Ward said, this is our family land, no, but thanks for the idea, we're going to throw in over 30 acres of wonderful, wonderful wine. So it's the champagne grape variety. This is a Pinot Noir. Do you want to have a, have a Ooh, taste? yes please. Mm. 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 So, 
Right, plenty of sugar. Well, enough sugar for our purposes. Yep. Yeah. Lovely acidity, and that'll keep it fresh and bright through the coming years as it matures. Um, so that's the pinot noir, and I don't know if we can pick up there on the camera. Those vines going up there are the vines of Chardonnay. So it's pinot noir here, Chardonnay, and then also some uh, pinot meunier to create a fabulous blend of the vintage wines of Squares. Here we have the Squares 2013. It's a beautiful wine, and we are so fortunate to have some of this to taste because uh, the estate produced their wine and then they left it under cork. So it's had four years on the leaves to develop all that rich, tasty umami flavor. And subsequently, a lot of it was sold, but then at Square is they've kept some of it back. And uh, recently they've released some just to be drunk in the restaurant. But at cork we've managed to get a few of these bottles, which we can now offer out for the tasting. And uh, it's unique in the country to find a wine from 2013 with that amount of time on the leaves and then that amount of time under cork. So it is now seven years old. Actually, I think that's a great time to start tasting vintage wine, vintage sparkling wine. Uh, lovely mousse. Beautiful beads there going up. And a great complex nose here. So if you're fortunate enough to have one of these with you, you will smell some wonderful hazelnut tones. Touch of lemon as well, a really nice ripe lemon. This is uh, a blend of the Pinot Chardonnay and Pinot Meunier. But as the wines age, you tend to get more of the Pinot Noir, more of the Chardonnay character coming through. Mm. And that is just so lovely, so integrated. You know, quite often when you're drinking sparkling wines, the acidity will just be off at that level. It'll be so dry. You, you, just find it so difficult to taste. But this wine, yes, it's dry, but it's rounded. There's a wonderful ripeness of fruit, and then you get that savoury note coming in, and the flavours just go on and on and on. Another great thing, another great aspect of older sparkling wine, so it's seven years old, is that the mousse or the foam just becomes so gentle uh, and you feel it almost like a, a tender sensation in your mouth, these little bubbles just, just popping, so they're more caressing. You know, sometimes you have a sparkling wine and there's this gush of bubbles. This is so, so light, so pretty, uh, and it makes you just want to drink some more. So it's a wonderful sensation and I've just had that sip, that taste, and I'm still getting those flavours coming through. Now, what is so different about Square is, is especially in Kent, it's very high altitude. Um, okay, we're not up in the Andes Mountains or anything, but for Kent, this is, this is pretty high. And that means it's a bit cooler. But they are on a south facing slope. They get the light, and they get coolness, which prefer, tends to um, just keep that acidity level down. And they can have a long, slow ripening. So, quite regularly, they're harvesting two weeks later than most of the other estates in Kent. Um, the yields aren't particularly high, certainly lower than in Champagne. So they get lovely concentration. And then they have this four years sitting on the leaves. The wines are taken off to henna's to be made. Uh, the, the estate as yet doesn't have its own winery. Uh, but there, the wines are made into still wine and then bottled where they have their second fermentation in bottle, and that is at least four years. Now that allows this autolysis, the breaking down of the, the yeast to give flavour, that allows for that to happen. And that delivers these flavours, these complex
reflect slavery notes to the wine. So you have that, and then, as I mentioned, you have another, what, three years on cork, and that allows interpolation of the little bit of sugar they put in to balance it up, and all those different flavour compounds just to start reacting with one another. And this is the harmonious result. Uh, my tip would be, if you like this, see if you can get some more, or see if you can get some other wines from Squarries, and don't drink it. Don't drink it straight away. Put it away in a cupboard, put it somewhere dark, somewhere cool, and then you have that as a special treat. So six bottles, you buy six bottles every year, <laughs> and then you leave it there for three years, and then after three years, you will have a continuous supply of one of the best sparkling wines in the country. Here we are out in Sussex, but actually on an estate that spans the border. So part of it is in Kent, but the vineyard is in Sussex. It's the Oxney Organic Estate. Um, and we're just post harvest now. And we're sitting in, in a vineyard that has various vines, uh, various varieties. So we have Pinot Noir, Meunier, Chardonnay, uh, and Sable Blanc. And we're in this vineyard that has just been harvested. So if you come down here, you can actually see what is left of the bunch. And it does look as though some bird has come down and taken all the, all the berries off. But in fact, this is the result of machine harvesting. And uh, this was actually done by Sam from Bindon, who has, I believe, the only machine harvester in the country. And it, it works by straddling the vine and then shaking it and right berries come off. So this is uh, a vineyard, particularly Pinot Meunier, and the Meunier uh, and it is used to make their sparkling rosé, um, but in this instance it's been harvested to make a red, so there will be a blend probably of Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. So whilst the vintage has been very difficult for them here, due to really bad frost damage um, in, in April, May this year, um, what has survived has proved to be quite good and ripe. Now the ripeness stems from the fact that this is quite a dry area. Uh, along with Gusbourne, uh, it, it, it's very close, they neighbour that. Um, but it is the dryness and hence lack of cloud cover that allows them to ripen here. So they're in a bit of a rain shadow. Um, another interesting point in this vineyard that was put in um, about 2000 and and is the replacement cane. So obviously there was a damaged cane here and you can see this is like a pencil in terms of thickness compared to these other ones uh, here which are a few years older. So this one, the young one, will, will start bearing fruit fairly soon uh, in a more commercial way. Oxney is an organic vineyard. There aren't that many in the country. A number of people believe it's rather foolhardy to produce organic. But I think if you believe in, in organic as a, as a system of production, using minimal pesticides and fungicides and herbicides, um, it works better with nature, although there are commercial risks. And I think that's important to understand. Um, Oxney has been organic from the start. The whole estate, which covers 850 acres, is organic. And the vineyard covers 35 acres. Uh, if you look down at the soil here, you can see there is a bit of grass, but it's, it's limited. So under the canopy, weeds have been taken out and that's done through um, a machine with, uh, attached to a tractor. Um, they spray for various rots, but for the organic producer now, there are a number of proprietary chemicals available, which are seen as organic. So it's a great site. And you can see the vineyards go on in the distance. Uh, on the Isle of Oxney in Kent or Sussex, depending on which way you look at it. Anyway, we're going to taste and we've selected their rosé, which we believe is a, is a fresh, crisp example of the product. It's no little Provençal rosé. This is a cool climate rosé. It's crisp, but a haunting red fruit nose, really perfumed and delicate uh, and fine through the summer 
but you can have this in the in the middle of winter with a salmon just look at it as a good quality white wine but with a little bit extra the next wine we're going to show is the oxney organic estate uh, believe it or not it comes from oxney down in the the south of england and this is going on very different soil so we know about chalk uh, certainly for our sparkling wine and down in Kent and this part of the world uh, moving through into Sussex there's lots of something called Tombridge sand who would have thought it that Tombridge had its own sand anyway it does but this is grown on silt and clay so not necessarily the most prestigious sort of uh, soils you can find however it does have as we've learned in the on-site video it does have a great great climate and one aspect of English wine is that we don't make much red wine and that's because our climate isn't that great for making red. Pinot Noir believe it or not is the most widely grown grape in the country 33 percent apparently is Pinot Noir which is huge Chardonnay is second but this is from Pinot Noir and whilst we can't make reds I think we've got a good chance of making some delicious rosé and who doesn't like a rosé on a warm summer's day or even as a little drink maybe on Christmas day just something to wash down that that salmon you know rosé is not just for summer it's for all the year round and this Oxney rosé the 2019 has a wonderful little pale colour it's made in the same method as Provence which is called direct press and it's so light it's so so pale it's just got the lightest bit of colour coming out of the skins of the grapes um, but on the nose it's just a really pretty scent of light red fruits like raspberries a little touch of pear as well just to liven it up but it's so fresh and bright and enticing and quite honestly on those warm summer days that we occasionally have that's when you want to grab the rosé hmm well that's so refreshing and so bright that i immediately feel a lot better <laughs> it's amazing what a glass of good wine can do and you know we've, we've spoken about uh, this this video this presentation being about world-class wines and I reckon any of these three if you had them at any part of the world you think oh, that's a wonderful wine so we should look at this wonderful rosé as a world beating wine it's a world standard it's crisp it's fresh it's got a lingering light red fruit character to it and it's just full of joy the other thing i love about oxney is that they are following a distinctly organic pathway you know there are a few places in the country that do that um, near to oxney you have Davenport and tillingham they're all very very good producers um, and Kristen has followed that pathway of becoming sustainable of working with the environment fewer pesticides and fungicides and herbicides. It means extra work, few extra costs, but the result is possibly long-term a more sustainable, uh, a more consistent harvest. And I love this. I, I would have it, as I said, maybe with some salmon, just as a refresher, you know, partway through the winter, and you want a touch of summer, have this. In the summer, have a little bit of this just to cool down. But it's a world-class, Rosé, 100% Pinot Noir. But we're here at Simpsons, and if you come this way, here we are with a huge press, and this is where Simpsons start off their sparkling wine once it's been harvested. So they have just around 80 acres of land, and they're pressing into these fast presses. It's in here, comes up, it goes there, and then it's pressed to get the very, very fine fruit. Um, 
these, this big bladder here contains uh, inert air, so it covers it so there's no oxidation. And the wine then produces a full turn into these containers, and from there it is pumped through. You can see these, these great pipes through which they go into the winery. So watch your feet, watch your feet, Jonathan into their glistening winery. Now what is amazing is that 2018 was a fabulous and big vintage. And if you turn around, all of this went up in 2018 and the extra press brought in purely because of that increase in volume. 18 was the biggest harvest this country's ever seen and actually 13 million bottles were produced in that year. 19 went down to about 11. So the volume is on the up, but it is so vintage dependent. Um, and just to put it into perspective, so Little England, all the vineyards put together, probably make about this year 11 million bottles. Champagne, 300 million a year, just to put it into perspective, okay? But Simpsons is here in Kent. Uh, they have two vineyard sites, Roman Road and Railway Hill. They're making wonderful wines and we're going to go and taste those later. We're now at the Simpsons estate, tasting the Simpsons wine. The Simpsons planted vines first in 2014, about 30 acres, uh, near Barham, and they have, I think from the very first release, which was 2016, made some world-class wines, accessible wines, and a range that are exciting and of a, a high quality. They're still finding their way, I think, in their, their sparkling wine. It doesn't mean to say that wines aren't good. In fact, they're very good, but they're getting that house style. You know, the Champenois have had centuries to develop the style that they want. And the English winemakers are just getting a grip on their own particular style for their house, getting to know their land, their vines, and what can be produced. I think they will have little templates about what can be produced. You know, they have an idea because they know what's out there. But from the onset, the Simpsons, Charles and Ruth, have had the idea of producing great sparkling wine wines available to people at reasonable prices, but they've also wanted to make some still wines. And this is the exciting part, I think, because we all know with our cool climate, we can make bubbles, but making still wine requires great sight, great skill. And this is Roman Road, named after the first vineyard which they put in, and it comes from particular blocks within that that have nice ripe fruit picked each year. The first one was 2016, so very young vines, uh, and this is the 19. Each year tastes slightly differently. And you know, that I think is great because it's part of the interest of wine, that the vintage will be different. It's the wine produced just at that margin of ripeness that shows the nuance and the subtleties. And this is what we have. So. Let me say, one of the things I, I look at wine from around the world and you see what the wines are similar to. Um, when you have a benchmark like white burgundy. And Roman Road has always struck me as being close to it. The 16 was very cool, it was like a Chablis, an austere Chablis. The next year the same. 18, a platinum winner at Decanter, um, was more like a, a full-on burgundy. And this is like another Coke door. So it's got some ripeness to it, but there's that little edge, that little edge of cool Britannia. It's that cool note in it. And here, um, you've got a lovely scent of oak, just that spice of cedar. And there's a lemon note coming underneath that, and then a white peach note coming. Little bit of dairy. Mm. Now that one, since I like it as much as the others, but I like it so much I have to drink it. 
On the palate, it's all those flavors sort of combined into one, but then the acidity that it has just runs through. It's that slight minerality and salinity on the finish. And so it, it's a very graceful and long palate, uh, a great deliverer, which is not only great to taste on its own, but it has that quality that Chardonnay carries, which is to go with a host of, of food and maybe something with a little bit of butter, maybe um, some, some turbot, I think it's big enough for that, or indeed some, some good chicken dishes. It's just a lovely, long wine, really well executed too. It's a world-class wine. And it's from here, just outside Canterbury, and long may they make great wines. Even in difficult years like 19, they still do it. It's a little treasure.